When knocking foreclosures, there's nobody better to talk to than Michael Frankie. Michael Frankie has an amazing YouTube channel. You guys should go over and check it out. We'll put the link in the descri description down below. Today, we are not gonna be talking about his business. He's got a 14 man team. You don't have a 14 man team. I already know it. Hell, I don't have a 14 man acquisition team. This guy's a gangster. Today, we're gonna talk about what it takes um, in terms of numbers, KPIs, when door knocking or reaching out to foreclosures, specifically, not foreclosures. Some people get confused by that. Let's just say pre-foreclosures, people that have not been foreclosed on yet. Michael, what's up, dog? Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. KPIs, what the hell does KPI mean? Key performance indicators. It's the different metrics in your business that you really need to track to make sure you're hitting your target. Okay, so trackables, right? So you wanna say, I'm going on a 500 um, mile road trip. That means I need to hit 50 miles. I have to be there in 10 hours. That means I have to do 50 miles every hour to hit my target. Okay, that's a KPI, a, a measurable, a key performance indicator. So if after two hours, I've only gone 30 miles, we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. So in order for us to know whether I'm on track or off track in my door knocking pre foreclosure business, we gotta have some measurables. So let's ask the first question I think most people are gonna ask is how many doors, how many actual doors do I need to knock to get my first deal? And is that really kind of a hard question to actually answer? It is. I mean, every single person's gonna have a different result depending on their skill level and the amount of experience they have elsewhere. For example, my first deal happened on the first door knock, but mm -hmm. that is not realistic. So- Well, we, you also had been doing deals, you kind of understood yeah. real estate. You could talk somewhat intelligently about um, real estate and you knew whether the house was a deal or not when you first mm -hmm. talked to them. So when you say skills elsewhere, what if you're already a salesperson knocking doors on a, so a solar team or like a pest control team? Michael was a freaking school teacher, dude. Like he did take a couple of years to get to that point before he knocked his first door, but he did get his first deal on his first door. It's not really the way it's always gonna happen. No, it's not. Okay, so let's talk about I'm a newbie. What is a good expectation? Because you have a lot of people on your team and people have come on your team, off your team, off your team, on your team, all of the things. How many doors should I plan on knocking before I complain that I haven't gotten a deal? Go out there and do 100 knocks at least um, before you complain about it. Uh, over that time, you're going to see a lot of interesting stuff. Maybe you get shut down at a door, but then you learn some things about that property or have conversations with others. You have that confidence now. You come back to that first door and maybe you close it then. Okay, cool. So your rule of thumb is 100 doors before I can complain that I haven't gotten a deal. Yes. Have you seen people start complaining after like 10 doors? Oh yeah, I get people in my DMs that are like, dude, I, I knocked three doors, no one answered, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro. Or they'll say, am I doing something wrong? Exactly, guys, that's not even enough time to, to figure out who you are at a door and be comfortable. Yeah, okay, 100 doors. And in previous videos, if you guys are watching this video right now, go back to previous videos. This is actually part four in a multi-part series. We'll probably do 10 videos today, 10 more videos in Taylor Swift and uh, Kelsey's <laughs> living room over in Kansas City where he lives. 100 doors three times mm. is what Michael Frankie has talked about. Why three times? Guys, you don't know when these people are going to be home. They could be at work, they could be taking their kids to practice or something. You have to hit them at different times. So don't expect that you go to a house one time and you're going to contact that person. There's gotta be some diligence there. Cool, and guys, remember, Michael Franke, I'm not, do I, when I started my YouTube channel, we weren't door knocking anymore. I started my YouTube channel in 2020. We turned off our door knocking team after COVID hit. And so I never really documented any, any of our live stuff. I miss it. Oh my gosh, one of my door knockers texted me yesterday. He goes, hey, I own a, a window cleaning company. Can I clean your windows? I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. You own your own business. That's really freaking cool. It's, it's fun to be able to see it. But guess what you won't be able to see on my channel? Live door knocking. You can see that on his channel. Michael Frankie is doing that on his channel. So when you're ready to see the conversations and what it looks like, head over to his channel again. Okay, next question. Okay, how many doors for my first deal? When you go to the door, we've talked about this in previous video, your goal primarily is either to set up a second appointment or some sort of follow-up, right? Yes. How many appointments or how many in-person appointments do you need in order to get an actual contract? So once you have that trust to get in the living room and set an appointment, usually the close rate, as long as you have a reasonable amount of skill, is pretty high. 
For example, my closing rates about 40 to 50 percent once I'm in the living room. Yeah. Okay, so the way it works is here. Ooh, here's a KPI we didn't. I didn't ask about the doors. If you go knock a hundred doors, how many conversations would you expect to have? I would say if I knocked ten doors, I would probably have two to three conversations. Okay, cool. So a hundred doors, I'm going to have twenty to thirty conversations. Yep. Love that. And out of those 20 to 30 conversations, how many of those am I turning into an appointment? So obviously you're gonna to have to follow up with these people um, through different mediums, set up a different time to talk, but in terms of an actual appointment to talk about the situation, I would say 25% of those. Okay, so you talk to 20 people, let's say hypothetically in the lower end, 25% of those people are five people. Yep. Okay, so you're talking, you're actually setting up a second appointment with five out of 100 doors you knock. Correct and you then are going and contracting 40% of those, right. which would be two deals. Two deals. Okay, so you're saying kind of an average uh, number. You're probably at your level, if I said, Michael, if you don't get five deals out of these 100 doors, your heart's gonna explode. You would go figure out how to get those five. Of course. You, Michael yes. Frankie. Yeah, for me, it takes about 20 to 25 doors to, to get a deal. But, okay, cool. So yeah. a normal average person that's just kind of getting started, you could expect two deals, out of five appointments, those five appointments come from 20 conversations that you've had after knocking 100 doors. Exactly, and let's say we even had a lower closing rate, maybe that's a little aggressive, 20% close rate. That still gets you a deal out of 100 knocks. There you go. Now, one thing that I would suggest you guys do, if you guys are inside of our community, the Sub2 community, I would suggest going with a closer to your appointments so that you actually have somebody a little bit more versed. Michael actually teaches this stuff. You guys will get his scripts and how to close in the living room. One of the most addictive feelings of all time, by the way. Okay, so I'm getting, let's say 100 doors. I'm getting one deal, hypothetically. Let's say that I do, I can knock 100 doors every 30 days. Okay. Okay. That means I'm getting one deal every 30 days. Do I? get any more deals out of the, let's say the 80 people that did not get an appointment mm. with, do I get any more appointments or deals with those people from my long-term follow-up? Oh, absolutely. And door knocking is just one avenue that we can go down. I mean, you have SMS, you have cold calling, Facebook messages, email, different ways that you can get a hold of these people. The people that you don't get a hold of are the people that you want to follow up in different ways. Okay, cool. And that's actually going to be the next video we talk about is what are all the ways that Michael and his team goes through and communicates with these people, reaches out to them, et cetera, and kind of what are the importance and what's the chronological, like, am I knocking doors first? Am I going to Facebook Messenger first? We'll talk about that in the next video. But what I think you're saying is you're saying out of the 100 doors that you knock, you're going to get one deal. But out of the 80 doors that you're following up with SMS, Facebook Messenger, other things, maybe direct mail, whatever it is, you're probably looking at another deal out of those ones as well, right? Oh, 100%. Okay, so baseline foundational, you're brand new, you reach out to 100 people, 20 conversations come from door knocking, five appointments come from door knocking, one contract comes from door knocking. What Michael's saying is there's the other people I couldn't get a hold of through door knocking, so I'm gonna text them, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, right? Whatever it may be, and I'm getting another deal out of those other 80 that same way. What is, now the next question I wanna ask, I've got two deals that month because I reached out to 100 people and I did follow up in multiple ways. What's my average assignment fee or profit on each one of those deals? Sure, out of the 300 plus pre-foreclosure deals that I've done, they average right around 25K. 25K, now is that assignment or wholesale or combination? Combination, um, a lot of mine are wholesales these days, I'll take them down, put them on the market, try to get a little bit bigger spread. But if you're new and don't wanna do that, you obviously have to find some really good buyers that can close on a tight timeline, but a uh, $25,000 assignment fee is reasonable. Have you done a video on your YouTube channel about what a hotel deal is? Nothing that grand. Austin, grand come on, bro. <laughs> Guys, in the comments, tell Austin and Eric, make sure we get a, we get a hotel deal uh, uh, YouTube breakdown. breakdown and have Michael break down one of his recent hotel deals in probably the last year, $25,000. So you're telling me that I have the possibility, if I go 30, 60 days knocking 100 doors, I have the possibility of making probably around 50,000 bucks on just this strategy. Guys, it's life-changing. I was a teacher before that. I had to work an entire year for less than that amount 
And you can go out here and, and put the strategy into place, make more than that in a month. Your first door knocking deal, I know you'd done deals before that, but your first pre-foreclosure deal was a door knock. It was. And you took home 60,000 bucks. That one was a $50,000 $50, sentiment. Yep. That's right. Let's say that I've got two contracts. A couple of questions I want to ask now is I've got two contracts. Let's say I go three months of stacking my escrows and I've got six deals under contract, all kind of simultaneous. How many of these six contracts would you say fall out of contract? So I would say probably one to two out of 10 mm. would fall out. And usually that's for reasons such as they underestimate how much they owe on the house. It ends up being crazy expensive. Maybe the arrears are, are so high that maybe you can't even take it down sub two. Um, maybe there is some other title issue that's beyond our control. So, okay, so escrow problems, yep. you pull title. Title pops up. I just had one uh, pop up the other day on a fix and flip we were buying here locally. We found out there was a um, workman's comp uh, lawsuit against the owner. He owned a business and he never paid his workman's comp and workman's comp sued him. He has a second lien in a lien in second position. It's like 280,000 bucks. And the seller's like, I had no idea that was there. Of course you didn't because you didn't get all the notices and you didn't fight workman's comp. You didn't, you didn't know any of this stuff was there. You'll run into that. That does happen. That has nothing to do with you and it has nothing to do with the seller trying to cancel on you. So those of you guys that have fear of a seller trying to cancel on you, Michael's saying it's mostly escrow problems that you're running into, probably 90% of the time, right? Yeah, if you set the stage the right way, develop that relationship and you know, you're that trusted advisor character, they're not canceling on you most of the time. Okay, cool. What are other KPIs that we need to talk about today to make sure that everybody walks away going, I know my KPIs? So in terms of door knocking, some key KPIs that you can keep track of, um, 100, 100 doors, three times, to get a contract. Generally, you'll get 20 conversations out of that. Four or five appointments come from those conversations and then a deal after that. Usually you can have average around 25 grand a deal. Perfect, I love it. $25,000 a deal. This makes me kind of want to go out and start knocking. Eric, you want to go knock some doors, bro? <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Can I buy your house? Pro probably make the KPI for a deal a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> now going to have to knock 200 doors with that script, okay? Um, guys, this was a great video. Hopefully these KPIs helped you. If you guys need more videos, we've got more coming up in a playlist, but also Michael Frankie has a YouTube channel dedicated to this stuff. Go over, subscribe to that, and we'll see you guys in the next video.